Hello, and welcome to episode 57 of the Penguin Soup Podcast. My name is Jenny, also known as Penguin Soup, and today is uh, Saturday the February 20th. Yeah, that's what day it is. One sec, don't get seasick. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. Um, so, last week I skipped the um, vlog because I got busy and was trying to get the yarn update done. So I figured I will do a podcast now, and since I've been bitten by the knitting bug, I'm pretty sure I'll have something to show you for a podcast next week. Yay! Also, my laptop is junky and is really, really slow, and I hate editing, which is a MacBook, and I hate editing videos on PC, and I feel like vlogs kind of need to be edited unless maybe I just kind of do this method where I talk, talk, talk. I guess we will see. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to do like a nice like edited vlog, so that's more work for myself, but... My to-do list is like as long as my arm still. It's been about that long for like a good four-ish weeks now. Just shop-wise stuff. Yay. Um, so this is a knitting show. There has been knitting. Actually, a surprising amount for myself. Um, oh yeah, I'm really, really upset because the Friday before it's actually kinda hot in here. Um, the Friday before my update. I was gonna actually do a vlog because I had eight or more um, swatches I knit, which are like this long, so I think I knit about a whole pair of socks in I think a day and a half, two days, where I gave myself like almost carpal tunnel, my forearms went tingly, so I had to actually force myself to stop knitting swatches. Um, yeah, that was fun stuff. So I was actually gonna show you all of that, but basically, say that you spent two days knitting a pair of socks, the whole pair, you finished it, you spent about an hour having them finished, and then you ripped those out. Yeah, yeah, that was my week. So, um, I kind of have a finished object. Are you ready? It's kind of depressing. Um, okay. Oh, also, don't mind the Division t-shirt. I got home from work and I haven't decided to change. If you don't know, I work at EB Games, um, as well as my yarn. So the division is coming out when they make us wear a stupid shirt. Um, okay, so in my Firefly Sisters by Just Lou bag is... Are you ready? What do you think it is? What did I finish? Well, I mean it's not fully finished, but it's finished enough. It's Arnaria! The freaking tank top! Because I was, um, I'm gonna vend at the Zombie Knit Apocalypse. And I was like, oh, I should totally finish that tank top. It'll be summer. I'll have something to wear that I knit. Yeah! It doesn't fit. So, don't make this mistake. Being a complete garment newbie, I swatched and was like, oh, yeah, my gauge is perfect. I swatched. Okay, quick, look at the schematic. 32 inches. No, didn't even look at the schematic. Look at the measurement. 32 inches. Let's go. Yeah, that's the band size. That's not my bust size. My bus size is 36 inches. So, this is 4 inches too small. And since it's man meant to fit perfectly, which it did a pretty good job of, when you um, add 4 inches, it kind of pulls up. So the waist shaping, where it's supposed to like hug your hips, um, like sit around your hips, is like at my waist. So it flares out at my waist and looks utterly ridiculous. Um, so I haven't woven in the ends, and I haven't done the eye cord around all the edges, because I don't care. I've got other things to knit, I'm busy, I'm going to wait until I find somebody it fits, and, I, and if it fits them, then I will fix, finish it, and give it to them, because I am not ripping out all of the yarn. But, I'm thinking about um, knitting it again, because I enjoyed it, and I want to have it to wear. Um, in, I think, the purple collar from Netflix Comfy? Oh yeah, uh, it was Anaria by, I got the name, Karen Demeter Lawrence, my notes are that way, um, 3.25 millimeters, I believe, and it was Netflix Comfy fingering, and I think it was parchment. I really hated the yarn, because I hate cotton. It's not bad after that, and you get past the cotton thing. Um, the pattern I enjoyed, it was really good. Um, I'm just an idiot and didn't look at the schematics. Ha ha! Yeah. So I'm calling it a finished object because it's finished for me. I can't wear it. I don't care. Um. That's delicious. Also, okay. Uh, boop -a doop -a doop Okay, we're good. Nope, wait. One second. I'm sorry. 
Oh no. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it alone. Oh, and I buried my stuff under a big pile of yarn. We're going with the flow. We've got a whip. Um, so a friend, ooh, hand cream. Um, a friend of mine asked me to knit them one of those hats, beanie hats with the big bearded thing for his nephew. Um, I crocheted it. I hate crochet. I crocheted the beard. It was okay. I crocheted the hat. It was okay. I say okay in the nicest way possible. There was much swearing and grumbling and complaining. I hate crochet. Um, the hat didn't fit at all. Um, I'm not doing a gauge swatch. I don't know how to crochet anymore. I don't know what I'm doing. I forgot how to count rows. Um, forgot how to count stitches and where to start and it's just stupid. No offense if you like crochet. Nothing against you. Nothing against your love of crochet. I personally just hate crochet. Um, so I ripped the hat. I posted a video on Instagram of um, I basically just hooked it up to my ball winder, electric ball winder, hit the button and just stood there and let it on my whole thing. Um, it was easy because then I put it into a cake for me to knit from. I didn't have to hand wind anything. I'm lazy. Um, so I took the yarn. Basically, okay, how I did it is I crocheted the hat and then I tossed it in a pot and dyed it. Um, I unraveled it. The green was the yarn that the hat used. Um, and then the white is just what I've attached. Basically, I'm just going to knit it, toss it in a pot and dye it. Uh, I'm about halfway done, I think. Oh, the hat pattern. Yeah, I forgot how to podcast. Uh, the Strip Hat by Kelly P. Williams. It's on my Penguin Soup and Arctic Worsted Superwash Base on 4mm needles. The whole reason I decided to do this now was because the hat was for Christmas and it was late. And two, I need these needles. What do I need these needles for? You'll find out in two projects. So yeah, I think I'm going to finish this this weekend so I can die it on Tuesday so I can give it to them next weekend. And then I can start my big project. You'll see. Okay. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. Next is an ankle plain penguin soup sock on um, my Royal MCN in the Miho colorway. 3.5 millimeter, um, six inch circs. Six inch, eight inch? Wow, six inch. Right? You guys should know by now. I, I need sleep. Um, also, someone bought a PS4 game for me today. Totally put the Xbox version in there. Yeah, it's one of those days. Um, so I finished the toe, or started, did the toe, completed, whatever. The toe's good. I got it onto the circles. Nine inch? I feel like I need a tape measure. I feel like I need brain cells. We're gonna, we're gonna just, we're gonna solve this dilemma. Hold on. That's three inches there. This is really hard to do on like a round ish. Nine inch! They're nine inch circulars. There we go. Okay. It's been a while. I just use them. I don't talk about them anymore. Um, yeah. So, why I'm knitting this? I knit Miho socks. I think I gave them to my sister for Christmas. Someone got them for Christmas. Um, and I had about 70 yards left. Um, having my um, electric skein winder, I just rewound it into a skein, and because it's 1.5 meters or yards around, this is really hard to talk about. Um, so I, oh, and I've got the uh, skein winder button. So I just pushed the button and let it go around and around, and then it told me how many times it went around, and I multiplied that by 1.5, and I got 70. There's 70 yards in here. Yeah. See, I could do math like yesterday, or the day before. Um, so my plan is I'm going to make one ankle sock. Why am I making one ankle sock? Well, I'm intending the zombies and apocalypse, if you hadn't heard like the last 20 times I talked about it. And I want to have socks to display uh, my striping patterns. And I want to have socks to like so people can touch the yarn. I also ordered something cool for this. I'll talk about when I get to the notes. I actually wrote show notes this time. I'm gonna try and podcast like a real podcaster. Um, yeah. So I'll finish these. You know, whenever. Um, I just started them. I might just knit on them in movie theaters. My plan is to knit as far as I can, at least until eight or nine inches, probably eight inches, and then I'll do ribbing. And then I'll throw in an afterthought heel. The plan is, because if I run out of yarn, because I don't really know how much I have left, 
um, and how much I need for a pair of socks. I've got this over here which wasn't counted in that and this is for sure enough for a heel. So I do what I can, throw in a heel, we're good to go. Um, so there's that. And oh I lied, it wasn't two projects, it was three projects away. Okay, after this next one is the big one. Um, so I've also worked a little bit on my jaywalkers in my newly renamed, again, Tuxedo Sock Yarn. It's no longer Fairy Sock, it's no longer Tuxedo Glitz, it's just Tuxedo. It's much more classy. Um, sparkles like the snow, I love it. Can I get the sparkle? Oh yeah, look at those sparkles. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's pumpkin, which is purple, black, and blues, and blacks and greens that I love it. Doing some jaywalkas. Did a little bit on that. These look really awesome. If you check out my shop, I kind of updated my shop and all the pictures and whatnot. Took a really, really good picture. It says, um, for all things Penguin Soup, check out the blog. It looks professional. I'll talk about that later, too. Knitting. Knitting now. Knitting now stuff later. Um, oh yeah, Jaywalkers by whoever does Jaywalkers. You know Jaywalkers. Um, tuxedo, 3.5 millimeters. Or 2.5? It's 2.5. I've been saying 3. Socks are knit on 2.5. Okay, continuing on. Um, so the big reveal. It lives in the Batman bag because good stuff lives in Batman. That sounded really weird. This is gonna be a weird show, guys. I'm sorry. It's gonna be a long, weird show. I hope you're like settled down. You got the popcorn. You're gonna need it. So, are you ready? Are you ready? Ba -ba I'm knitting the Ginny cardigan by Mary Chiba. Yeah, I'm knitting it in Dream and Color Classy. I lost the tag under the yarn. You'll, it's over there though. Um, in the Great Happy colorway, and I'm knitting it on four millimeters. You want to see it so far? Bum -ba -da bum, swatches. Um, so why I'm knitting that hat is because I figured if I started this with my four millimeters, because let's get real. I'm going to use my high highs and I'm not going to pull out my nitpicks because I'm a needle snob like that. I don't have signatures though, I'm not a fancy pants, I'm just snobby. I think that needs to be the name, I'm not a fancy pants, I'm just snobby. Done. Okay, so, um, yeah, finish the hat or else it would never ever get done. So I'll finish it probably tomorrow, and then I can cast on. So, I knit a lot of swatches because I was going to do a blog post on it. I was actually going to take pictures pre-blocking and post-blocking, but I got lazy. Really lazy. Um, but I did it on 4mm, and it looks like this. Then I did it on 4.5mm, and it looks like this. Then I did it on 5mm, and it looks like this. It's extra floppy and drapey. So this one's not going to work. Um, these two actually had the exact same gauge when I knit them the first time, so I was really, really confused. I figured that has to be blocked before I can actually decide. Um, and I was watching the Amy Herzog class on Craftsy, and she says that if you put your finger through it, like this, then that's not good fabric. So the 5 is not good fabric. Let's do the 4.5. See? Still almost goes through. Not good fabric. Let's do the four. Not even. I mean a little bit, but not, never. That's not going through. Um, four it is. Four actually got really, really close to gauge. I think I was supposed to get 20 stitches and 26 stitches. And I was like 19.5, sometimes 20. So I figured that's a blocking problem to 28 stitches. So my stitch gauge I'm going to consider is fine. And my row gauge is off by two. But that's okay. Um, the sweater, I'm going to be, I want another 36 inch, but all the other measurements would be, I'm sorry, my legs are really sore, so I'm trying to like shift them here. Um, the 36 inch, all my other measurements would be way too big, but everything fits on the 32 inch. So I'm going to just start and knit the 32 inch, and when I get to the bust increases, I'm just going to increase until it hits the 36 inch size, so I'll do the math to make that right. Um, 
so I guess it's for the 36 month size instead of like every example here haven't I don't haven't memorized every six rows it'll probably be every like four rows or something I'll do an increase or whatever um, so I'll just follow those instructions to get the right bust size do the right cup size but bye bam I got a sweater yeah okay so that's whips and that's that guess what else guys I got spinning um so I actually finished not washed and thwacked um, a skein of the pink stuff I've been working on and then I actually have almost finished um, some of my orchids merino um, but I'm not gonna show you that because it's kind of still on the wheel I just want to do a two ply and then we'll be good um, but this oh it's a little overspun right there that's okay um, this is um, here let me show you it Bam. stop looking at me that's close enough. The color looks like crap because the lighting. I look really white because of the lighting. I don't care this time. Um, it's always bad. The lighting's always bad. Welcome to the Penguin Soup Podcast. Um, oh yeah. Uh, Wedding Orchids from Unwind Yarn Company. It's like the second or third time I've spun this. I'm so tired of pink. Um, I think it was the Superwash BFL one because I bought a couple different versions of it. Um, it's 373 yards of a lace-ish weight. It's like a, that's, that's two of them, hold on. And my camera sucks and probably won't focus, but, come on. There we go. Is that a lace weight? What do you think? I think, I consider that a lace weight. Like a heavy lace weight. It's not a light fingering, it's like a heavy lace. But I'm going to wash it and thwack it, we'll see how it goes. Um, so I spun something. Um, I spun that after I knit so many swatches I couldn't knit anymore, so I went to spinning. What's next? I'm going to do Dragon Wings by Boo Knits out of my Sybil single in the Antarctic Singles, newly renamed Antarctic Singles, um, because I want to have samples for my show. Also, thinking about going to a show in Woodstock, Ontario in October. It's the same weekend as Rhinebeck. I probably won't make it to Rhinebeck this year, but so I might as well go sell stuff. Um, but that one will be in Canada and like four hours away-ish, so it'll be closer, so that'll be fun. Um, yeah, so then I'll have samples for multiple shows. And next year I'm planning on going to like at least two or three, and I'll try and hit a big, big, big one. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff next to you, like I've really been looking at a lot of knitting things. I want to knit all the things. Uh, cool stuff! I ordered four plastic feet! Um, why did I order plastic feet? To display my socks at the show! Um, I thought it was a good idea, so I got two pairs, which is four feet, and I'm going to, they're really cool, they're kind of like, the toes are like this, so they like stand like upright and stuff, where you can put them upside down. Um, they're really cheap, they're white plastic feet. Um, yeah, I'm going to put socks on them, all, prob all probably self-striping, um, in different bases, and then different striping patterns, so people can kind of see what's what. Um, Ravelry! So... Um, Carolyn McPherson designed a GG pattern, is what she called it, out of my Rainbow Dash yarn. And I mentioned, I think, in November or December, the time before last that I podcasted, that she gave us a code for a free pattern, and I would give it to you when I podcasted. Well, me being sick, and um, not podcasting in a while, and I didn't really take notes, I forgot to mention it, and some people, instead of going to me and being like, hey, where's that code she gave you, went straight to her and were kind of upset and kind of rude, which I'm kind of disappointed in you guys because she was kind enough to offer us a free pattern. She's having it free until just December 2016, so all of this year you can go get this pattern for free. It is awesome. It looks gorgeous. There will be a knit along soon. Um, if you have any problems with my shop or with me or with orders not shipping in time or offers or anything I mentioned in the podcast, Please, please, please come to me and don't bother the people that um, are offering these free things. Because it was my fault that I didn't mention it. Uh, totally got my mind. I didn't mention a lot of things in that podcast. It had been forever since I podcasted. Um, I had the code. You just had to come, even just send me a message and be like, hey, you forgot about it. Can I get it? I would have been like, oh my god, I'm so dumb. Sure. Um, but it was really sad for me to hear that people kind of bothered her about it. Um, it wasn't her fault. It was completely my fault. She doesn't know my podcasting schedule. She doesn't know when I was going to mention it. 
it was all on me. Like, I really wanted to do a big thing and mention it, and then do a big knit along and have giveaways and have free yarn. But, um, you guys pushed it and now it's out there, so kind of knit along opportunity missed. Um, I think probably next month I'll still do a knit along. It'll just take me a little bit to get set up. Um, also, hold on. Questions! Um, so there's some two prizes to give away. Um, I asked a bunch of questions last podcast and put up some the clicky things. Polls! Yes. Um, so the prize for those are here. We've got... Oh, I suck. I was going to set this up. Hold on. Random.org. Yes. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm still here. Um, I just really suck. And I'm sorry if you hear a whirring noise. My desktop is super loud. Questions. Okay, there are... Oh, get out of the way, you're on 65. So, 2 to 65. Okay, so we are giving away Pumpkin King Lip Balm, which was made by Nerdtastic for the Nightmare Club. Um, Pumpkin King is kind of like a pumpkin pie flavored smelling one. It's really, really yummy. So you're going to get that. You're going to get a Stormtrooper cookie cutter from the awesome Star Wars um, club. My friend actually 3D printed these. It's really sweet. They look awesome. And a custom mini skein. 30 grams of however you want me to dye it that is not self-striping. Let me know the colors, let me know any methods, and I will give her a go. So that's for you. So we shall find the winner. 2 to 65. Generate. Number 40. Okay, hold on. What page is that on? I'm page 2. I think. Yeah, hold on. 40. The winner is... Monty Knits. She's new to the group. And her name is Annette. Oh, I know you, Annette. Congrats! That's awesome! I know, Annette. Um, yeah. So you are... The winner! And then... Sorry, guys. I'm losing it. Um, so send me a PM, and uh, let me know what you want for your yarn, and your address, and I will ship that stuff out. If you let me know soon, I hope to try and die Tuesday this week, or I'll have to wait till next week. Um... There was a yarn renaming contest. The winner is AK47. She is suggested to name a base Happy Feet. I found, I was looking at new bases I wanted to pick up, and there is an awesome base that I will be naming Happy Feet. She also said I should have a category for odd skeins, or ones that I didn't die as expected, and pay tribute to the Isabella and Penguin. Stupid camera. Um, so, she said, um, Pay a uh, category for odd skeins, one that didn't die as expected, and pay tribute to the Isabella and penguins, which is penguins that are born with brown plumage instead of black. They're different from um, albinos because they're not white. Um, they have a shorter lifespan, probably due to the lack of camouflage, and sadly are usually passed over for mating. Um, I did not know that. That was so fascinating. I definitely need to have that kind of a category. So then she also said that um, groups of penguins are called creches, I think is how it's pronounced, which I didn't know either. Be being a penguin fan, I kind of suck. Um, so if I sell batches of mini skeins, I should call them that because that's like the best name for it. Um, so I got three names from her. She's epic. So she gets a whole skein of yarn of whatever she wants. Um, she's also going to be my roommate for the zombie apocalypse. I'm so excited. Um, so send me a PM with what you want and I'll get it sent out to you. Uh, and that wasn't a favoritism thing, that was like the best answer. So many suggestions of win. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. um so, also, the knit along I'm gonna do, a Gigi Pattern knit along, probably next month. Pay attention to that, there will be prizes. Um, I have a review! This is a long podcast, my knees are getting cramped. So I got Jane Austen Knits 2015. I bought it. Um, it's been a while since I looked through it, so I'm going to kind of flip through and talk about what I like. Boop, 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 boop. This is how penguins roll. 
Um, so I usually love to read all the articles. I think I read most of them in this one. I found them a little more boring than like the last couple of years. I really, really love the info about the textiles and history. This one didn't really grab me. Maybe I was just in like a bad mood or uncomfortable, I think I remember, but yeah, it didn't really do it for me. Um, so I really like this Colonel Brandon sweater. It's green. Oh, is this thing not gonna? There we go. Look at that handsome dude. Um, page 38, hold on, I got this, I know what I'm doing, no I don't, um, it's by Kathleen Dames, and I don't really have a lot to say about it, I like it, it's cably, I'm really bad at this, I'm sorry, oh yeah, um, this Fanny's Winter Shawl, I freaking love this, it was cable and it's a shawl. You can use it as a throw or a blanket. Kind of reminds me of a um, blanket I want to knit in Erin Knits. But I love that cable design. I think it's really pretty. It looks really warm and I really love how they did up the model. Um, I think she's very Jane Austen-y to me. Never really read Jane Austen either. Sorry, my throat's really dry. Probably because I'm drinking iced tea, but... Um, they had a cool sock pattern called the Gentleman's Hunting Socks. It looks like they use um, self-striping and then they use some slip stitches I believe and um, some pearl to give it depth. I think it's really cool. You can tell it's self-striping because the bottom, um, the instep, is all stripey. There we go. Look at that. That's a cool freaking sock. Um, they got a blanket, they got a hat. I don't really care about those. Um, I don't know, a lot of these seem like not practical to me at all, and I would never wear them, but some of them are pretty. Um, Mary's scarf I think is pretty, but then, um, Lydia's scarf? Yeah, Lydia's scarf, this, this model here, this lady, hold on, I can't see what I'm showing you. Um, right here, totally makes me think of Mrs. Doubtfire. Yep, I see Mrs. Doubtfire. So, I would not wear that. Um, they have the Mary Crawford surplice. Um, it's a cute little, um, almost fulero, but kind of not. Like, it's a cardigan that goes down to the back, but it's super open in the bust. And I like it. I probably would never wear it, but I like it. And then they got a coin purse that I think is kind of dumb. And it's kind of like a scarf with a thing in the middle and a hole. Eh. Um, they got Tea Cozy. So it's just Tea Cozy. It's, it's a Tea Cozy. It's not special. Um, and if I offend you, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being really blunt and honest about these. Um, I've got the... So the garden section. I'm really bad at this. There were sections of the other ones. What were they? Um, so the last ones were town, and that green sweater was country. That makes sense. Okay, now we're into the garden, and I like a lot of these. We've got the prettyish wilderness shawl. Again, I really just like the model, I think. I don't think I'd knit that, but I just like the picture and the color and how she's wearing it, but I'd never pull it off. Um, then there's the rose garden mitts that I like the lace work in. Hold on. There we go. Um, there's some big purple gloves, and a uh, knitted handkerchief. The Henrietta Spencer is really cute in the back, but I hate the front. So, really cute in the back. It's lazy. I hate how there's loops around the buttons and there's holes in the front. I would switch it and just do like a regular old button band and that'd be okay. I'd also want it, I think, to come down a little bit. I don't know, there's not a lot of shaping. It just makes her look kind of frumpy. Um, overall, I'm kind of disappointed with this this one. Um, there's not as many like lace pieces. And I really like the, oh, we're getting into it now. Um, Manor, yeah. 
Um, but I really, really like the lace in the other ones. And then there's this one pattern. I don't remember what it's called, but it's a big, gigantic, like, blanket size shawl. It's all lace weight. And I really, really want to knit it. Just its construction and it's cool. I'll link it later. Um, so we've got the garden walls wrap. Which is just, I think, an extra wide scarf with some lace on the end in a different color yarn. Super simple, but I really, really like it, and I really, really want to knit it. And I've got two different green yarns, and I could totally just go pull that off. Um, I kind of feel like I have to knit it on my stuff to, to get like all these samples done and everything. So... Yeah. I've also got like a really nice book that I bought way back when. Um, and it's got like really cute, like sweater almost jackets that I want to knit and out of the Harry Potter knits I want to do the Narcissa jacket thing or that long lacy one of doom that takes like lots um, but yeah so overall it was okay um, I was kind of disappointed I liked the other ones better with the bigger lace pieces um, this one just seemed kind of simple or like stuff I would never wear I think I gave it like a 2 out of 5 because there's, I didn't really like it. There's like maybe two, three things I knit out of there. Um, but it's pretty. It's just I wouldn't wear it. That's my problem. Oh my god, my legs. Oh. Okay, so I've never done this before. But I thought I would offer it to my viewers first. Then I'll throw it on Instagram and go from there. I've got a couple things I want to sell. Um, so I'll start with the most expensive one first. And I'm going to show you guys real quick. I don't want to make a big deal out of it. I just want to give you guys the option that if you're interested, um, because it's either planner or knitting related, let me know. Because I want to help you out and give you guys the opportunity. Um, so planner first. I've got my gray matte medium Croco Campania from Gilio. I paid 260 bucks for it. Um, it is like baby buttery soft. It's shiny. It's Croco. It's gray. The colors are gorgeous. I'm really sad to get rid of it. Um, I loved it. I had it in my purse for about a month-ish, its own little separate pocket, and it managed to get a pen dot here, a pen dot here, and a dark spot here. Um, so I just can't use it because I'm terrified of getting it dirty. I think I'm going to try and sell it for $220. US dollars. Um, I know it's expensive. It's really quality leather. I know I'm crazy for buying a planner that's that much. Um, but if you're interested, send me a PM. I also am looking to downsize my green emerald rare. These are both rare. They're all three are rare. Um, emerald green personal Finsbury from Filofax and the A5 version. Um, the A5 version, I think, I don't remember the prices of them. Send me a PM if you're interested. I would sell them cheaper as a bundle. Um, the A5, this personal, absolutely perfect, perfect rings, nothing wrong with it at all gorgeous planner I just don't use it because I got a Jaleo the A5 came like this it's got a nick on the spine right there um, and a nick nope that was that was dirt um, so it's just got the nick on the spine yeah and that's it um, okay knitting related I didn't bring them over. One second. I'm horrible. Uh oh, where'd they go? Oh, right there. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I've got uh, two Jordana page bags. This one comes with the dust thing. I've got the teal LJ Kelms. Um, I'm asking $50 for it. I think I paid like $120 for it. It's just, I, my favorite travel bag, it's just too heavy. Like, my planner probably weighs as much as this bag, if not more. Um, and I just can't carry it around. It's freaking gorgeous. Um, I just have a really bad back and it's getting worse. So I've just been not carrying a purse around the past couple of months. Um, Absolutely nothing wrong with it. No nicks, no marks. The bottom's fine. Feet are fine. Um, it's got the little detachable purse, notions pouch. Awesome, awesome, awesome knitting bag. They're stupid hard to find. 
so I should charge a lot more, but just 50 bucks. Let me know. Um, I also have Jordana Page Bella. The only thing wrong with this one is one of the little feet fell off. Um, you still have metal on there, so it protects the bag. <coughs> um, I'm sorry, hold on. <coughs> it's just too floppy for me. Um, it's my problem. But I really, really did like this bag when I used it. Um, I think I'm asking 35 bucks. So it's got each pocket, divider. It's really, really nice looking. I like it. It looks good on. Um, there. It's cute. Um, so let me know. Um, last thing is my industrial Stanwood extra large ball winder made out of metal with nylon cogs <coughs> and plastic here. It's amazing. Um, I just don't hand crank stuff anymore. Like I said, I've got kind of a bad back. Um, warping and dying is hard enough on me, so I got the electric winder a while ago and I just haven't used this since. And if I have to, and the electric part breaks down, um, I can turn it into a hand crank. So I'm good. Um, I think they're $80. They're on sale for $49 right now. I'll sell it for $40. Um, maybe a little less. Talk me down. Send me a message. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I'm gonna grab a candy to suck on. Hold on. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Apparently I'm not used to talking this much. Okay. Shop stuff! Um, so I don't think I'm gonna have clubs again until August. Uh, I'm just trying to catch up and get my shop going again. Then I gotta focus on moving, possibly getting a new job, um, and the, the, the apocalypse. Um, so that's in June. I figured I'll probably move in July, so clubs in August. Um, I revamped my site, um, and it looks okay. Um, I redid all the sliders. I'm actually really, really happy with them. Um, especially that blog post one. It looks fan freaking fantastic Super happy with my photography and Photoshop skills. Um, <coughs> but I am going to be working on a new site as soon as possible. Um, there's just some things I want to do to my site that StoryMV doesn't allow. Because um, it's kind of limited. It's like a slightly more customized version of Etsy. Um, I'm going to build a whole new site. I'm going to be having my blog hosted on my site. Um, I may be able to have my pod podcast hosted on my site. <coughs> um, I'll, my site will also give me a POS, um, point of service or point of sale, so I'll be able to make transactions um, in person through my site. So being Canadian, to get Square, the little reader, to charge cards, <coughs> I need to have an American bank account, which is kind of hard to do. And they want me to have an American address when I sign up. But I live in Canada. So to have an American account, I need an American address, which I don't have. So how do I get the damn card reader sent to myself? And they have the worst customer service, and I've been waiting like five days for a response to how I should go about this. I hate it. So if I can get my site up and running and just do sales through that and take credit cards and PayPal uh, payments through my point of sale thing, mobile, on my phone, um, when I'm at the convention, awesome. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to have a new site as soon as possible, hopefully before June. Okay. The schedule has changed. Updates are every first and third Friday at 3 p.m. That's kind of been standard for the last little while. Podcasts and vlogs are going to alternate every Sunday, where I podcast on weeks with... Uh, without updates, so vlogs on weeks with. Newsletters will be every Monday before the update. Blog posts will be every Wednesday and Mondays that don't have an update. So I'm hopefully going to have a lot of content coming your way. Check the blog, I'm going to have useful stuff. I'm going to try and do tutorials, um, talk about my sweater, talk about kind of dying, not really, I don't want to, I don't really talk about that a lot, but I'll give you a little bit of info. <coughs> We had different bases react and stuff. I'm so 
So my camera actually ran out of space. This is one of the longest videos I've had in a very, very long time. But we're almost at the end and I stopped coughing. So um, I told you the whole schedule. I won't repeat it because it's absolutely massive. Um, but there should be a lot more content coming your way. Um, on to yarn porn. Yeah, yeah. So what's in the shop now? Let me show you. Um, since I really want to rip this out, we've got Peeps! So here's a cake, here's a swatch. So thick stripes of yellow, thin stripes of blue and pink. I've got this on my tuxedo base. I think it's actually sold out right now. Um, but there will be more. Or let me know if you want more and then I'll make sure I dye you one. Um, it's not showing, but it's sparkly. And it looks like this. There we go. Um, then we got a dead Pokemon because it's the 20th anniversary of Pokemon Red and Blue being released, which makes me feel old, especially when I went to work with someone at another store who was younger than me. I was playing Pokemon before they were born. Yeah. So, um, when I first opened my shop, I dyed all three of the starters, um, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. So I figured for the 20th anniversary, I'm going to dye all of their evolved forms. And I dyed them in a sim symmetry way. Um, I'm going to call it the symmetry yarns, I guess. I don't know. So I come up with the penguin way. Basically, it's like this, and when you unfold it, you'll have sections of all of these colors. So it'll be a nice variegated yarn. Um, but this is Charizard, so we got the cream color for his belly. And that's pretty dead on to old school Charizard. The light sucks. But that is old school charts because he's the lighter orange, he's not the darker pumpkin -y orange um, in the very, very original ones. We're keeping it, uh, keeping it, um, whatever that word is. I give up. Um, and then the blue, which is more blue than it's showing up on the camera for his wings. Charizard. Then we got Blastoise. Sandy for the belly, dark blue for the Charizard, or uh, Blastoise, and the dark brown for his shell. And I really, really, really love this one. And Venusaur. Venusaur is on the tuxedo base. It's got this um, weird, awesome, bluey, dusty blue. That's what that is. That's the dusty blue. Because that's his belly. Then it's got green for his leaves. Then it's got brown for the stalk. And then it's got this nice kind of a red for those big leaves on him. Um, the flower, sorry. Red for the big flower. So this is a Venusaur. Then we have Forget-Me-Nots. I was really inspired. I was looking for flowers. I wanted to dye some flowers for spring. And I saw this really cute pink flower with a green center. I was like, I need to dye that. I need to try this new symmetry method I wanted. I need to do it. Because um, I used this for losers for Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and it was awesome. So... It's green for the center of that little flower, and then this nice light pink for the rest of the flower. And I really, really like it. I think it'd be really pretty for spring socks or a shawl or something. For other spring colors, I saw this really cute purple daisy. So I've got this nice purple daisy. So it's the yellow for the center. And the, so if I had a lot of them and dyed a bunch, because I'm running out of yarn, I need to buy some more. Um, I would have dyed like five of them, and then if you put them together, it would have made a flower. But we got two different flowers. It doesn't work. But that was what I was going for. So this is the center and the petal of a daisy. Um, and it's this nice light purple. Um, I also, so that's on Sparkle Base, which is a uh, tuxedo. I also dyed it on my Adelaide sock, which is the same thing. But, since it's got silk in it, you can see how it's so much lighter. The silk just doesn't pick up the color. Well, there you go. Now you can see. So yeah, it's a nice pastel version. And this is... Guys, I know it's kind of pricey. You won't regret it. This stuff is amazing. Oh, I love it. Um, also on that base, I dyed Murex. Um, which is dyed for the and uh, named after the type of snail that the um, Tyrian purple color comes from. Think ancient Roman times with the Phoenicians, that purple they always wore. Um, the color actually came from these snails. And in the the project or the display pic, the 
product picture, I guess, yeah, not project, product picture. The very last one is a picture of a guy actually pouring the snail onto yarn. Gross, I know, I did not do that. Um, and it's like this weird kind of like a inky blue color, but the more he puts it on, the purpley it becomes. And then Phoenicians love this color because instead of getting lighter, it actually got brighter when it faded. Um, so it was definitely by royalty. And this is my most royal sock yarn ever. It's baby alpaca, cashmere, and silk. It is freaking awesome. This doesn't show the color half as well. The color on my shop is a lot better. Um, but it is super soft and it is a color in for royalty. And I, I want someone to knit this so bad so I can see what you do because it's just, it's just amazing. Um, I also did some focus Schwamp. It always comes out different so it's fun. Um, so it's got blue tones. This is actually blue. Um, right here, blue. And with some purple and some yellows and some greens. So it's not brown, it's just purple and greens. So it's a focus Schwamp. Um, really good for men's socks. People are liking it for that. I've got some kitty. So it goes gray, black, gray, black, gray, pink. All the same. Love it. Um, it's for Soft Kitty from Big Bang Theory. And I've still got another Razzles in the shop, which is that really bright rainbow color. Oh, I gotta. Whoever gave me the name Razzles wins something. I'll give you a code for the shop. Message me, whoever gave me the name for Razzles. Because there's a yarn name thing in there. Um, we've got Sakura, which is light pink, dark, dark pink, and this brown. Uh, Sakura being cherry blossom in Japanese, so it's for the cherry blossom trees, which will be blooming soon. Yeah, yeah. I've got Calypso, which is on my Adelai lace. So it's the exact same content as the Adelai sock. Um, and it's this deep, depthy blue here. This light is horrible, I'm sorry, it's always horrible. I really like this one. This will make a gorgeous shawl. Um, and then I have same base, Adelaide base, Silver Surfer. So it's a nice tonal silver. Um, you can see it more here, it's tonal. Really, really nice also for a shawl. And these ones, oh, I love them. Uh, they're called April Showers. So I dyed it on my newly named Antarctic Sing, uh, Super Antarctic Worsted Superwash. Um, so it's a nice gray, and it's got pops of blue, green, pink, and yellow for spring. You can see it peeking there. Really, really cute hatter toy. And I dyed it on the one, the only, never dyed this base before, Sparkle Lace. So this is Tuxedo Lace. So it's a really light gray with all these pops of color and how you see them all here stacked up. I didn't rescan it, I left them stacked. Those are going to all separate when you knit with it. So you're just going to have a gray shawl with pops of color. I love it. I kind of want to keep it for myself. So hurry up and buy it so I don't have to knit with it. Um, coming in the next update, I re-dyed those sock blanks. No one was caring for them. Um, I'm going to redo another sock blank too. I'm going to try and stencil it and make it look pretty. Um, I know these look crazy, but the thing is, if you want a really variegated sock yarn, they're going to do that. You're not going to see these weird splotchy things on them. You're going to actually see pops of color. Um, it won't be so much pooling or flashing. So we've got um, a pink one. It's kind of like a pink gradient. We added flowers. It's hard to see. It was really hard to dye with those bottles. That's why I'm going to try stenciling because this was rough. Um, so you can see all the different flowers with swirls in between to give you some extra craziness in your sock. But there's that one. Um, we've got fishies with seaweed. I really like this one. This one was fun. So here's the fishies with the seaweed. All different colors. It'll pop and make you some crazy socks. And 
the best one of the bunch. Because... Rainbow penguins! Really, really hard to draw penguins. Don't laugh at my art. <laughs> Rainbow penguins! Oh. <laughs> Yay! Rainbow pe- oh, hold on. There we go. Rainbow penguin! <laughs> Hence, I'm trying stenciling. Um, but you won't have horrible looking penguins in your socks. It's okay. Um, basically, you just grab the end, which unraveled a wee bit here, and you just start knitting from it, and it just creates this crazy sock for you. So I'll have those three, and then one other one I'm going to try stenciling. They're all on my tuxedo base. And they'll be on the shop for next update, uh, along with some other stuff. Um, I think that is it. I hope you guys will check out the new shop design, give me some feedback, because I'm really, really happy with how it is. Not really, really happy. I'm mostly happy with how it is. I want to make a lot of other big changes. I just can't do it with what I got. So I'm going to go back or go home and upgrade. Um, hope you guys have a great week. I'm hoping I will have a sweater started so I can show you next week. Happy crafting!